so hello and welcome back guys so in this video we are gonna see what if naruto was a god like swordman so this is part 7 and sorry about yesterday i did not upload a single video because i went to watch dragon ball super super heroes movie so yeah it was a very good movie and i enjoy it uh, and also if you are new and channel then subscribe and uh, if you like this video then please leave a like and uh, comment down below so let's get in the video Kurenai smiled please come in Akazama Kurenai lead Kashina inside to her living room which was connected to her balcony on the balcony was Tai and Ino now sitting on two chairs around a small table glaring at Kurenai oh I didn't know you had company Kashina said as she noticed them company Kurenai asked sounding confused I don't. Kashina pointed at Tai and Ino, and when Kurenai acknowledged them, she smiled and said oh you mean those two losers of love? Hey. Ino yelled pointing an accusing finger at Kurenai you haven't won anything yet Kurenai sensei. That's right cunt. Tai added. Meanwhile Kashina had a tick mark on her forehead with her eyebrow twitching about that. Could you tell me about your and Naruto's relationship? She asked Kurenai who smiled brightly with pleasure Akasama. Meanwhile with Naruto. Naruto had realized that getting payback on Kurenai was not as easy he thought. He knew a little about this woman and did not know how to make her suffer. In fact Naruto did not know much about any female at all and figured he needed help to make this mission of his a success. That was why Naruto was now currently knocking on Narashikamaru's front door. According to the information Naruto had gathered this Narashikamaru, or that Shikagai as Naruto would refer him to, was the smartest guy in his age group. So Naruto figured, if this Shikagai was so damn smart he should know how to make Kurenai suffer. The information was of course gathered after hearing Chouji talk about Shikamaru during Anko's training before the Chunin exam. Since it was starting to get a little bit late, one irritated Narashikaku opened the door. Naruto's knocking had interrupted his silent staring at his bedroom wall. Hello Shika Naruto greeted as the door opened, and when he saw Shikaku he raised an eyebrow and thought, when did he get those scars? Aren't you that guy who tied for first place in the Chunin exams? Shikaku said with a yawn. Indeed Naruto answered, while thinking of course, that smart peaches will point out that I tied instead of one with a frown. Shikaku tilted his head and stared at Naruto lazily, while Naruto was lost in his thoughts. They did that for another two minutes until Shikaku asked so, what do you want? He figured out I want help, as expected of a smart ass as Naruto thought, before answering I need you to help me deal with a deceiving, cunning, trickster demon Ana. Shikaku raised an eyebrow demon Ana, he asked his voice a bit shaky. Did those exist? Was there anyone scarier than Yoshino out there? I'm sorry but. Shikaku was interrupted as his wife Yoshino called from the kitchen what's that dear? Huh? Nothing dear. Shikaku called back troublesome. He mumbled. Okay because I thought I heard someone say demon on a Shikaku heard knuckles cracking do you know anything about that? Aha Shikaku laughed as he sweated then turned paler than Arachimaru sorry dear I just remembered I have some really important Jounin commander work to do, he yelled and rushed out of the door. Move it Yuzumaki. Shikaku yelled out that is if you want to live. Troublesome. Shikaku mumbled as he ran. An angry brunette who wore clothes similar to his mother, but in different colors armed with a frying pan was all he needed to see to Shunshin after Shikaku. Five minutes later on top of the Hokage monument. Shikaku and Naruto were panting and sweating as they stared down on the village from the mountain. They had been running non-stop to get away from that woman with the frying pan. W what the hell was that? Naruto yelled in a shaky voice. Shikaku laughed loudly, while Naruto thought he had figured it out himself well that was my lovely. He was interrupted by Naruto, so you have one as well? Huh? Shikaku responded. Naruto put his face close to his and yelled a ghost. Hey no that's not. Naruto interrupted him again I will help you with your ghost problem, if you help me deal with Kurenai Naruto, had a ghost himself and he had figured out how to deal with them as he showed during the Chunin exams. Kurenai? Shikaku asked while thinking this evening might turn out better than what I had planned Shikaku thought that, but doubted it would be better than staring at his wall in peace. Yes Naruto said grinning evilly however, she's a trickster witch and shouldn't be taken lightly. Okay so tell me everything about your situation with Kurenai Shikaku said with a barely noticeable smile as Naruto told him how Kurenai had tricked him during Anko's exams and the many punishments and other things he had to endure. Meanwhile at the Nara's home, Shikamaru just woke up from a nap due to all the noise earlier. 
he decided to ask his dad what was going on, but could not find him anywhere in the house, so he settled on asking his mother. He found Yoshino who seemed more irritated than usual sitting in the kitchen sipping on a cup of tea. Mom what was all that noise earlier about? Shikmaru asked but at the same time he was getting ready to run back to his room and lock it if his mother was in a bad mood. Yoshino turned to him and glared your father thought it would be funny to give me a new nickname. Shikmaru swallowed slowly before asking what kind of nickname? Demon Ana Yoshino said with a smile that terrified Shikmaru and haunted him in his dreams. Yeah now was the time to run and hide in his bedroom, why the hell did he get out of there anyway? Everything is always just so troublesome. As Shikamaru turned around to leave he heard his mother speak that was before he ran off with that blonde friend of yours. Blonde friend? Now this did not make sense to Shikamaru the only one he could think of was Eno, but why would she have anything to do with this? Why would Eno be here so late at night? Shikamaru asked. Eno? Yoshino asked with a chuckle are you dumb? It was that Yuzumaki kid who won the Chunin exams today. He tied Shikamaru was quick to answer as he ignored that his mother had just called him dumb. Shikamaru then began thinking. Why would Naruto want to see his father? Shikamaru imagined something involving drinks, his father making up plans and Naruto executing the plans. This might be the end of Konoha as we know it Shikamaru said as a drop of sweat fell from his forehead I have to find them. Troublesome. Yoshino stared at Shikamaru's back in confusion as he ran towards the front door thinking that he was overreacting. The punishment she would deal out later to Shikaku would hardly be a threat to Konoha. She sighed troublesome kid. At Kurunai's apartment. Kashina wore a proud smile currently after hearing Kurunai telling herself about her and Naruto. Apparently Naruto was quite the gentleman. Meanwhile Taiya and Ino were pointing at Kurunai accusingly saying things like no way and liar. The story Kurunai told earlier. Kurunai and her genins belonging to Team 8 had been attacked by four ninjas of Rain Village. One of them a Jounin and former Konoha Shinobi, Rakusho Aoi. Aoi had three Chunin level accompanying him. The Chunins defeated Kiba and Hinata quickly, but struggled a bit with Shino. But her students fought bravely. Kurunai herself was distracted by seeing her students lose, and even more so after hearing what the Rain Ninjas had planned for her and Hinata later. Due to her being distracted, Aoi managed to get the upper hand in their battle, as he had her pinned on the ground. Just when she thought there was no hope a shiny figure moved out of the trees towards them. It was a handsome young blonde man riding on a toady wore fabulous white clothes and a big black mantle. The young man got off of his toad and looked at her students and said this is horrible I shall defeat these scoundrels and avenge my friends of Konoha. The noble toad riding prince then made short work out of the Chunins and Aoi impressing Kurunai with his skills. That's what happens when you go up against the force that is Kanoha Naruto said standing tall before the corpses may your souls rest in peace. Kurunai then told Naruto to bring a sword that Aoi used which he had stolen from Kanoha. Naruto did as Kurunai told him and then he took a good look at her. My lady, you're hurt he said with concern. Kurunai blushed it's fine I can walk she said but Naruto would have none of that. He gently lifted her and then carried her bridal style I will carry you back to Kanoha, my lady. The prince then made three clones to carry her genins the same way as the gentleman he was. After a few hours the prince needed a little break as he had been running while carrying them for hours. He had brought with him a fine wine which he offered Kurunai before reading her some poetry. Kurunai then thanked him for saving her and her genins and commented on how he was a lot stronger than she expected for a young man as himself. Naruto had then blushed and scratched the back of his head and replied, My skills lacks in comparison to your beauty, Kurunai Haim. End of story. Naruto really did all that? Kashina asked in awe. Kashina ni don't believe that crap. Taiya yelled the shithead would never wear anything like that or talk that way and more importantly, fine wine, poetry. Really? She yelled her question comically. Taiya along with Ina waited eagerly on Kurunai to answer, instead Kurunai ignored them in favor of answering Kashina. Yes Ka-sama. Naruto has always been a gentleman Kurunai blushed last time I went shopping he even offered to carry my bags. Kashina jaw dropped she never thought Naruto could be so. Nice. Liar. Ino yelled red with anger, when Naruto was in my bed last month he told me you forced him to carry those bags as punishment. Kurunai, Taiya and Kashina only heard when Naruto was in my bed and ignored the rest. Kurunai was thinking of ways to get rid of Ino without leaving any trace, while Taiya was cracking her knuckles mumbling you fucking bitch. 
Kashina looked as if she was figuring something out before asking are you Inoichi's daughter by any chance? Ah, yes Ino bowed politely I'm Yamanaka Ino, sorry for not introducing myself. Kashina smiled kindly at Ino who now stood up straight again, don't mind that, what a sweet girl you are, she definitely liked the idea of Ino being Naruto's girlfriend, more than the old succubus that was Kurinai. Teia nudged Kashina to get her attention Kashina ni. Didn't you hear what she just fucking said? Kashina nodded slowly I'm sure you got the wrong idea, and besides I doubt anyone ever slept with Naruto she thought back on the time Naruto had fallen asleep in her bed during their training. Kashina had not seen him in the dark at first, and attempted to climb into the bed. She was stopped by the tip of Naruto's sword pointing at her throat. Kashina had jumped back in surprise, and noticed that Naruto had done it all in his sleep, before she decided to settle for the bed, that Naruto used to sleep in normally. Yes I agree with Kasama Kurinai said smiling brightly. After all there was no way Naruto would ever sleep with someone other than her, ever. Meanwhile Kashina's eyebrow twitched due to Kurinai still calling her Kasama. Tei and Ino looked at each other thinking along the same lines then shrugged simultaneously. I want to hear more about you girls and if possible about Naruto. How about a little trip to the bathhouses, my treat? Kashina said. She didn't have to wait long for the girls to accept the offer. With Naruto and Shikaku. Naruto and Shikaku was walking along a road in Kanoha. A road very close to Aburam Shino's home, said Aburam Shino was close enough to listen in on their conversation. Shikaku was currently telling Naruto about his plan on how to deal with Kurinai. Are you sure about this? Naruto asked. Troublesome Shikaku answered immediately yes, you have to capture her for the plan to work, we need her to be alone. Naruto frowned on the thought of being alone with Kurinai I see. So be it he answered, and Shino who was listening on narrowed his eyes at them. Shino did not like what he heard, where those two planning on attacking his sensei. He decided that he should go tell his teammates, Kiba and Hinata about this and work with them to stop Naruto and Shikaku. If everything went according to Shikaku's plan, Naruto would be a man by tomorrow. Shikaku laughed at the thought Kukuku. Are you mocking me? Naruto said with a hand reaching for the sheath of his sword. No 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 Shikaku said hastily then faked a cough guess I'm catching a cold. NGH. HMPF Naruto responded as they walked further down the road towards Kurenai's apartment. Now Naruto and Shikaku was after Kurenai who was with Kashina, Ino, and Teia heading towards one of Kanoha's bathhouses. Shikamaru was trying to find Naruto and Shikaku to prevent them from endangering Kanoha. Shino, Kiba and Hinata was zoomed to follow Shikamaru going after the two, but for a different reason saving Kurinai. But those aren't the only ones plotting plans. One Saratobi Kanohimaru was at the Kanoha Academy's playground swinging on a swing with his right hand clenched into a fist. Everything's your fault. Blonde bastard. Kanohimaru muttered. Three unknown figures. A woman sat on a rooftop staring at the Kanoha village with a bright smile this seems like a great night for an adventure. Another woman was in her apartment currently wearing a newly bought black dress that showed a lot of skin. It barely covered her thighs and showed much cleavage. Are you ready for that reward I wonder, she thought with a big grin. A girl with boobs way too big for a 13-year-old had made a cat costume for herself. It was all dark, so she could easily sneak around during the night. She got the idea of the cat costume due to her teammates' tenant and cat-like tendencies. This was the costume she would use to capture her fiancé and take him with her home to Kumagakur. It was just a regular evening in Kanahagakur. It did not take long for Naruto and Shikaku to reach Kurinai's apartment. After knocking on the door once they stood there sighing and scratched the back of their heads for 10 minutes. I believe she is not at home, Shikaduro Naruto said to the elder Nara. Shikaku covered his eyes with his right hand and whined troublesome. Naruto unsealed a bottle of sake from a scroll he carried around in his shirt's pocket. You drink? Shikaku asked him and only received a raised eyebrow in response. Naruto stared at Shikaku for a while, before shaking his head and gulping down the contents of the bottle in a few seconds. Let's find her. Troublesome. Was Shikaku's immediate answer as as he followed after Naruto who had went ahead off him, if you had booze you could at least share some. Don't worry I raided the old monkey's basement recently, I'm not running out anytime soon Naruto said as he unsealed another bottle of sake and gave it to Shikaku who grinned thanks buddy and slammed his hand on Naruto's back. You you. Indeed Naruto chuckled next to Shikaku thinking, so this is what it's like to have friend. They made their way down the stairs of the apartment complex and walked down the road. Watching them from the shadows was the one 
that Naruto thought he was talking to, Shikamaru. Shikamaru had followed them for a while now, to prevent them from doing anything that could hurt Konoha. As Shikamaru was about to move to follow them, he saw something interesting. There were more people out this night following the two. First it was young Konohamaru accompanied by an old man with long white hair that looked like a hermit to Shikamaru. I'm telling you Brad a surprise attack would be stupid Jiraiya told Konohamaru who he had met up with earlier and heard his story. Jiraiya decided to help Konohamaru get revenge on Naruto. Then what am I supposed to do you old pervert? Kor. Konohamaru yelled at the man. Don't call me that. Jiraiya yelled back and slammed his fist down on Konohamaru's head a surprise attack is out of the question you will end up with your head cut off before he even realizes who you are. All that hurt. Konohamaru whined on the ground holding his head. Walk it off, brat. Jiraiya yelled dragging Konohamaru along as he did not want to lose Naruto. This was a good opportunity for him to one-up Naruto as well. If he could somehow help Konohamaru defeat Naruto he was sure to be embarrassed and Jiraiya would make a joke out of him for days to come. Above Shikamaru was someone that was trying not to get caught just like himself. An Anba woman with long purple hair wearing a Nico mask. It's getting interesting the woman said before she jumped to another rooftop following after Naruto. Shikamaru face palmed and mumbled I knew it. Troubles and the end of Konoha was near. Just as Shikamaru had foreseen the inevitable doom of Konoha had begun as Naruto had been attacked by an unknown girl in a full-body black cat woman suit. She had used a rope as a lasso trying to capture Naruto, but failed as Naruto would not be easily caught like that. Narada jumped aside and yelled, what do you want team? Is that a way to call your future wife? Not cool Samui said as she walked forwards from the shadows into Naruto's view. She placed her hands below her chest and pressed her breasts together while doing so. I will be taking you home with me to Kumo since you have promised to give me your children. Shikaku began laughing out control as Naruto was about to rage out of control. That was not only because of Samui and her antics it was mostly due to the white hair that had surrounded him capturing him. Jiraiya had caught him and was now ordering Konohamaru to end it. Take him out brat. Yosh. Here I come core. Konohamaru armed with a baseball bat jumped into view and ran towards Naruto whose eyebrows now twitched unnaturally fast in irritation. When Konohamaru had reached Naruto, Naruto tilted his head to the right and stared Konohamaru down give me your best shot imp. Konohamaru did hesitate for a bit, but not for long. Konohamaru raised the bat and hit Naruto as hard as he could straight into Naruto's face hitting his nose in the process. Naruto did not even react to the hit and asked that all you got? Imbecile. Samui yelled and threw the rope at Konohamaru capturing him instead I will castrate you for hurting my man she said calmly as she pulled the rope and Konohamaru back towards her. Let go of me now, Irosen and Naruto said with closed eyes. Jiraiya did let him go and then jumped in front of Naruto and laughed at him, how could you let a little kid like that get a hit on you, you imp, taunting him as he laughed. Naruto threw a quick punch that Jiraiya couldn't dodge. Jiraiya held his face in pain what was that for? Listen you old pervert I don't have time for your antics today I have more important matters to attend to, you're in the way Naruto said firmly with no room for discussion. Naruto turned to Samui and said release the imp and get out of our way Kumo on and Naruto yelled at her. Samui let go of the rope and hung her head in defeat, is there something wrong with me, she said in a low tone as she raised her head to look at Naruto am I ugly? Naruto grinned and leaned in towards Samui and whispered you are many things but trust me, you are not ugly then kissed her cheek. Naruto then ordered Shika to get moving. This is Gold Jiraiya thought as he scribbled down notes in his notebook. Samui did not listen as she was still dazed from the small peck on her cheek earlier he kissed me. He kissed me. He's so cool she thought over and over again. Naruto and Shikaku were already on their way with the same people following minus Konohamaru who had had enough for one night. Jiraiya had not however as his pervert senses spiked and knew that something good would come out of following Naruto. When Naruto and Shikaku had gotten further down the road Shikaku asked is that normal? Is what normal? Naruto asked. Jiraiya, the third's grandson and girls from other villages attacking you? Hmm Naruto thought on it for a while I guess it is, what about it? Troublesome Shikaku said chuckling can I expect more attacks this night? Naruto thought on it again before answering. He knew that Yuga was following him as she usually did. This night she was alone which was unusual since usually the elder Hyuga sister would be doing the same. Those two never attacked him or bothered him, so he did not have a problem with them following him around. He could not sense anyone else following them or come up with someone who would want to attack him other than the Hokage, due to Naruto stealing his booze. 
No, I don't think, so Naruto answered as they walked into another road as they turned a corner. The first thing they saw was Kanoha's most popular bar. Without hesitating Naruto entered the building seeing his chance to score some booze without having to reach into his storage scrolls. Even though the bar was full of people, ninjas and civilians, Naruto had no trouble reaching the bar stools and yelling out his order, throw me five bottles of sake, on him he pointed at Shikaku who shook his head and mumbled troublesome before ordering two bottles for himself. Two bottles was enough for Shikaku who had already had two bottles at home. A few moments later Naruto had finished his five bottles and yelled for the bartender to bring five more, raising his sword threateningly. Anyone getting in his way now would pay the price of getting in the way of the senju. One hour later. Every single person had been threatened by a wasted Naruto armed with his sword. This had resulted in most of the visitors leaving the bar. The owner and the bartender did not care much about that, though as Naruto by himself ordered more than most of them together anyway, while Shikaku paid the bill. Naruto slammed his empty gupa chest that was filled with beer earlier on the bar table. Ugh he groaned I shouldn't have had those three barrels of sake earlier. Shikaku almost spit the beer out of his mouth as he stared at Naruto in disbelief troublesome. There was no way he was telling the truth anyway. Naruto turned toward Shikaku and frowned let's get going. Shikaku nodded in response as Naruto began walking out of the bar whispering senju. Troublesome. Shikaku mumbled following after him. Meanwhile with Kurinai and the others. The girls had finished up in the bath and were already dressed again and on their way back to their homes. After walking for about five minutes in silence just enjoying the quiet evening Taiya yelled Kurinai is a fucking whore. Language Taiya. Kurinai yelled and slammed her fist down on top of Taiya's head. Don't mind her Akasama, she is just jealous because she has realized that I am the woman that has Naruto's love Kurinai responded with a smug smile. Liar. You're a dirty liar. Ino yelled with a finger pointing at Kurinai accusingly. No one responded because they were a bit surprised as Anko walked into the street. Anko was wearing a tight black dress that reached down to her knees. All in all she looked gorgeous in the dress and would no doubt catch the interest of any man looking like that. Oh it's just you Anko said with a sweat rop seeing them still fighting over Naruto? She asked. Silly Anko Kurinai chuckled lightly, why ever would I need to fight for something I already have? I swear Kurinai sensei one more word and I'll fucking rip your tits off from your chest. Taiya said with a bit of chakra from her biju leaking out. Well keep on fighting, I'm rooting for all of you Anko said with a light wave, before heading the same way she was earlier. Excuse me Anko-san, where are you heading? Kashina asked since she was curious, while she was dragging Taiya's ear for the choice of word she used earlier. Oh me. Anko said with a wide grin that reminded them all of Naruto's smiles I'm looking for Naruto, to give him a very special reward she winked at them and then disappeared in a shenshin. Our reward? Kashina stammered then got lost in her own daydreams, no doubt having another dream of Naruto taking advantage of her. She must be stopped at any cost Kurinai spoke to herself, if Anko as much as lays a finger on my Naruto I will go rogue. Tei and Ino stared at Kurinai with shocked expressions I will have to kill her and then take Naruto with me, we will have to live on as missing ninjas. Kurinai went on and on about how she and Naruto was destined to be with each other, no matter the circumstances, while Taiya and Ino used that chance to get a head start in trying to find Naruto. With Naruto currently in the Hokage's office. Am I lost? Naruto wondered out loud. Shikaku responded with long sigh, while Hirzen asked do you think? I'm a fucking genius Naruto spoke to himself after being teleported by an unknown source to yet another dimension. This time he found himself in Konoha, so he knew it was at least his homeworld. The big difference with this Konoha and the other two he had been to was that this one was covered in snow, it was winter, and looked to be around Christmas from all of the decorations. I shall buy myself a bottle of sake and two whores, and it will be a very merry Christmas Naruto thought out loud as he walked down the streets of Konoha towards the only brothel available in the village. If Naruto was going to get stuck in this new world for a long time then he had to make sure to talk as little as possible to any people he had known in his previous life. He did not want to repeat of what happened last time. Sure having more wives than the Hokage had ninjas on her peril was nice for a while. But there was a limit even to Naruto's stamina. The non-stop sex was not the biggest problem for Naruto however, it was the consequences of it. He had more kids than he could count on two fingers, he did not even know all of their names. As Naruto continued walking down the streets he stopped and stared off into a forest surrounding the village far away from him. 
There was almost no one else outside meaning it might actually be Christmas Eve. But Naruto felt one chakra source which was alone out in that forest. Naruto decided to investigate and headed that way. Since being able to teleport both via Horation and Biju mode it did not take Naruto long to arrive at a certain training grounds in the outskirts of Kanoha. On the training grounds he found a big barrel that was covered with snow. On the top of the barrel he saw two feet sticking out of it, most likely belonging to the person whose chakra he had sensed earlier. Thinking it was a drunk who was about to freeze to death, Naruto hurried over to the barrel and shook it only to be met with the tip of a sword on his neck. This is my training grounds the person was no longer inside the barrel instead he stood behind Naruto still pointing the sword at him, I acquired it fairly by defeating the monkey so-called Chunins. Naruto did not even register what the stranger told him, since after just hearing his voice his eyebrows snapped back and forth in an unnatural way as he was really irritated. Behind him stood what had to be a younger version of himself, yet again. The younger Naruto who shall from now on be called Senju stared at the back of the older man who had interrupted his sleep far away from the ghost and the menacing women who wanted to do this Christmas with him. Who the hell was this old guy? His blonde hair was the exact same color as his own with a hairstyle that reminded him of his father. His clothing was also similar to his own and his father with almost everything being blue. You know, pointing a sword at your elders is rude Naruto spoke with a sigh. Very well Senju responded as he drew the sword back then asked who are you? Naruto spinned around to face Senju with a big grin on his face. Senju thought at first that he was looking at himself in a mirror until the older version of himself started dancing. Naruto spinned his head around thank you for asking. I'm a toad sage who had traveled and created a harem in at least four different worlds. I'm a fucking genius, Yuzumaki Naruto yo. Toad sage? Harem? Yuzumaki Naruto? Senju repeated the words in his mind as he had figured out the situation. This was a dream where Kurama was mocking him yet again. Kurama, go fuck yourself. Senju yelled before walking away from Naruto. Naruto used the Horation to get in front of Senju, making Senju almost jump up in surprise. Naruto's eyes were closed as he spoke Kurama is my pet his eyes snapped open as he glared daggers at his younger counterpart I'm Naruto, got it brat, he yelled at him. Calling him brat was uncalled for and now he had to pay the price as Zenju grinned and whispered Senju. A few seconds later, and after a little smoke had cleared Senju found himself pinned to a tree with kunais holding him in place. He was shocked, who the fuck was this guy? He was stronger than anyone he had ever faced before, the old monkey and Iro Senin included. Fool. Senju yelled with white eyes I will have your head. Naruto chuckled quiet brat, I'm in command here Naruto then closed his eyes and ordered I'm going to tell you a little about myself, then I want you to tell me all about you and your life. The older Naruto told him his story of how he had saved his world from Akatsuki by defeating all of them and then Kagaya, only to be teleported to another world, Earthland. Fairy tale. In Earthland he did not accomplish as much as in his homeworld, but he found his first two loves in Teiya and Lucy. The third world Naruto ended up in was where Naruto's story ended as he mumbled about M redheads riding him all night long until the bed broke. Senju found the story to be interesting and somewhat similar to his own situation minus all the sex. So Senju told the older Naruto his own story. By the time he was done the older Naruto was walking away from him, you're on your own, kid, I'm not going anywhere near that ghost or ugly. Hey come on, Dadabeo. Senju yelled which had Naruto stop in his tracks and turn around well if you put it like that, Tobeo then removed the kunais to free Senju. Listen brat. Stay away from Kashina, Teia and any other redhead you may encounter Naruto spoke like a sage. The scene reminded him of his own talks with Jiraiya when he was younger and had just left for his three-year training trip. Instead focus on the dark-haired big-breasted women such as Anko and Kurunai Naruto continued but was interrupted as Senju pointed at him are you insane? Sure Anko is a fine Ana, but the Baka Ana. Naruto nodded sagely oh, so you like her, that's good. Senju blushed with a pout fuck you. Naruto understood Senju like no other. He was him after all. Considering the pet name you have given Tai I take it, you like that redhead as well? Senju frowned I won't answer that. What are you some kind of mind reader? Naruto let out a long sigh all right onto the plan. Normally I would come up with something that would end up with me having sex with all of your women as Naruto spoke Senju was reaching for his sword, that was until Naruto continued but not anymore, nowadays I'm a hooker only kind of guy. Senju nodded slowly since that made sense, less hassle that way. 
So today you're going to do exactly what the redhead wants you to do. Redhead? Could you be more specific since you knew a lot of redheads? Are you an idiot? Tai of course Naruto responded staring at Senju with disappointment. The reason he told Naruto this was because back at home it was Tai that was in charge. And somehow by listening to Tai and doing her wishes he always ended up in an orgy with all of the women he knew. Somehow he hoped that this younger version of himself would end up in the same situation, not knowing how different their both situations are. Senju nodded alright I can do that. An Anbu who Naruto knew to be Yamato arrived at the training grounds Naruto you have a mission, young Moji has been kidnapped by a foreign ninja with red hair. Fuuka. Senju spat. Naruto waved his hands lazily at Senju, let me deal with this red head, you go celebrate your stmas with your friends. Hold on, you don't know Fuuka Senju was not done talking, but got interrupted as Naruto threw a right straight into his face shut up brat. You're sickening me. Senju. Senju whispered in confusion. Grow a pair will you? Naruto spoke as he walked away with his hand now firmly placed inside his pants go celebrate. In the meantime I'll show you how to deal with problems such as this one. Senju nodded whatever, full he whispered heading back to his apartment to find Taya. A few hours later. Senju found himself with two black eyes and a nose that used to be broken before his Zenju chakra healed it. He was now hiding in his closet from all the angry women. Why did this happen? He had just asked Dubli or Taya for instructions, and somehow that lead to this. But things were looking up as the door to the closest opened and Kurinai stepped, in wearing a skimpy red and white Christmas outfit. We're finally alone Kurinai whispered sitting down next to Senju who raised a half-empty sake bottle indeed that was all that was needed to be said before clothing was removed, and Senju found himself playing with Kurinai's tits. Kurinai was grabbing for Senju's dick inside his pants to free it, so she could finally have a piece of that. Unfortunately for them both the door slammed open. Staring at them with anger was Taya, Ino, Kashina, and Anko with their right fist raised. It was a very merry Christmas. In the meantime the older Naruto had dealt with the Fuuka situation. He had captured her and returned Moji to Konoha. Naruto was now fucking Fuuka from behind under a tree in the outskirts of Konoha. Naruto pulled Vyuka's hair hard as Vyuka moaned loudly taking your chakra this way is better. I didn't say you could talk. Naruto yelled as he thrusted harder fucking Vyuka into unconsciousness. This was the same way he defeated Kagaya in the last dimension. Naruto grinned as he stared at his defeated opponent I defeated a redhead. Dot. Naruto opened his eyes, only to see two mops of red hair resting on his chest. One belonging to Taiya and the other was Kashina. Naruto shook his head slowly with a tick mark above his eyes causing the redheads to wake up. Good morning shithead Taya said with a yawn as she kissed Naruto's cheek. Merry Chirstmas Kashina said kissing the other cheek. Naruto stared up at the wall of his room close to tears why, he yelled why, he yelled as tears bursted out of his eyes. Am I lost? Naruto wondered out loud. Shikaku responded with long sigh, while Hirzen asked do you think? Naruto was often drunk, but rarely this drunk as he stared at Hiruzen in confusion, didn't I tell you to bring me another drink, he asked the old Hokage thinking that he was talking to the bartender in the bar they had left earlier. It's late Naruto I don't want to deal with your silly antics right now Hiruzen said with a frown as Naruto unsealed his sword from a scroll in his shirt's pocket. It's been so long since I cut someone Naruto grinned in in a way that could only be described as Ichimaru Jin-like. Naruto closed his eyes as he spoke again don't make me do it, Dadabeo. Shikaku. Why are you two drunken idiots here? Hiruzen yelled as he had had enough. It was late, and Hiruzen would much rather go home and sip on some sake of his own, not knowing that he no longer has any sake. Shikaku sighed, then pouted as he mumbled troublesome before scratching his beard, I'm helping Naruto score a date with Kurunai-san. Hiruzen's eyes widened go on. As if Shikaku had just told him about something very important. Naruto here asked me to help him in fact, he went on and on how he had to see her tonight Shikaku smiled dumbly with a small blush young love. Hiruzen nodded sagely, it's a surprise they haven't gotten a room already. Sanjiraku Pondo Ho Naruto yelled as he swung his sword in the air towards Hiruzen launching a long range attack from his sword. Hiruzen easily dodged it by ducking under his desk. His wall and windows behind him could not be saved however. Shikaku's jaw dropped as he stared at the destruction of the Hokage's office. Shitty brat. Hirzen yelled carving up the sleeves of his shirt. The fuck did I do? Naruto ran as he had started realizing the danger he was in and the fact that the man behind the desk 
not a bar counter, was the old man, and not a bartender. Naruto ran down the corridors of the Hokage Tower with Hirzen chasing after him. When they reached the bottom floor and Naruto ran outside, Shikamaru who was still on the rooftops nearby was able to localize Naruto again. Troublesome. As I expected Shikamaru thought with a frown. Shikamaru had observed that he was not the only one in hiding watching the events that transpired below him. Hinata, Kiba, and Shino was on a rooftop nearby mumbling about protecting their sensei. Not Hinata however she was here to help Naruto with whatever he had planned for Kurinai. Shikamaru's jaw dropped as Naruto and Hiruzen had stopped running and yelling. The reason for that being that Naruto had turned around and hit Hiruzen in the face with a right straight which caught Hiruzen off guard. Hiruzen was able to shake off the pain from the punch easily, but did not get the chance to retaliate due to the genins of Team 8 having jumped into the scene to defend him. Naruto. What are you doing to Hokage-sama, and what is this I hear about you going to attack Kurunai-sensei? Kibi yelled out his question as he stood from across Naruto and Hiruzen with Shino and Hinata behind him all three in battle stances. Hinata was looking around the area searching for Kurunai with an evil glare. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he hiccuped, before replying how do you know about the mission, he was referring to the very important mission he and Shikaku was on to get payback on the Bakaana. Hiruzen had managed to get up on his beat and was making his way back towards the Hokage Tower, there would be consequences of this Naruto he turned around and grinned, I have booked a meeting for you in my toilet for tomorrow, it hasn't been cleaned in years. Naruto's eyebrow twitched at that, since he was probably the last one that cleaned it before he disappeared from Konoha. Cleaning Hiruzen's toilet was one of the many chores he had to endure after pulling one of his worse or better pranks depending on how you look at it. Kiba and Shino's jaw dropped as Hiruzen walked away that's it. Kiba asked not believing that Naruto would get away with attacking the Hokage just like that. Hinata nodded with closed eyes as expected of Naruto-kun she then opened her eyes and fidgeted with her fingers h hello and Naruto-kun. Naruto turned his head towards Hinata and looked at her for a second thinking do I know this person, then turning back to Kiba immediately with a skull answer the question or I will take action as he grabbed the sheath of his sword. Kiba held up his hands in defense while he exclaimed and backed away with slow steps this is just what Shino told me. I hardly believe it myself. Naruto grinned who is this Shino? Naruto sounded very excited while asking. Kiba just drew his left arm in Shino's direction and pointed at him. Naruto turned towards Shino who nodded back to Naruto I overheard your plan to attack Kurunai-sensei earlier. That's because you and Narashikaku were almost yelling it. Naruto grinned even wider a spy he thought and was about to make his move when something else caught his attention. Something more interesting than the spy. It was the target of the mission, Kurunai Yuhi. Kurunai walked over to them slowly with her arms crossed under her chest Kiba, Shino, and Hinata what are you three doing here at this hour? Kurunai sensei? All three asked at the same time turning towards her with a surprised expression on their faces. There you are Naruto said slowly as he walked towards Kurunai Baka. Baka Ana. The genin of Team 8 was shocked Naruto had the balls to call Kurunai that. This could not end well for him. Hinata however were cheering Naruto on in her mind and calling Kurunai worse things than that. Naruto I have told you to call me Kurunai-chan or Kurunai-haim. Kurunai yelled out in frustration as Naruto had made his way over to her. Naruto lifted her up from the ground and carried her bridal style would you let me treat you to dinner, haim? Naruto asked as he stared down at Kurunai with a smile. Kurunai smiled brightly and moved her close to Naruto to plant a kiss on his cheek of course, koi. Which caused Naruto to get a tick mark above his eyes g great. He exclaimed after that all we have to do is make sweet love to each other and then you will be stuck with me forever yeah. Naruto did not understand all the details of the plan. Or why this was considered the best payback in that Shikagai's mind. Kurunai blushed madly as she stuttered d did you just propose to me? The jaws of the genin of Team 8 could not drop any closer to the ground as they stared at their Jounin sensei and former classmate in disbelief. I proposed something Naruto said fast without a care and without thinking. I accept. Kurunai cheered happily and moved closer to Naruto again this time throwing her arms around him then moved in for a normal kiss. Naruto at first tried to move his head back to avoid the danger but accepted the situation. Once Kurunai's tongue entered Naruto's mouth Naruto started to get into it himself. They played with their tongues for about 30 seconds until Kurunai ended the kiss. Naruto dropped her on the ground and walked in the opposite direction, what the fuck have I done? He mumbled as he started moving faster what the hell did I do to deserve this? Kurunai frowned as she nursed her bum that got hit from the fall. 
Naruto turned around and stared at her with confusion. Are you coming? Huh? Well, you're my woman now, right? Kurunai nodded happily. Naruto grinned good. I expect you to move in with me and keep any inhuman objects away from me. Kurunai sweat dropped. Of course, she knew about Naruto's fear of ghosts and that he still thought of Kashina as a ghost. I also wanted to try out oral sex, Naruto continued, while Kurunai made her way over to him. I want that as well. Great. Was all teammate and Shikamaru who was hiding on a rooftop nearby heard as they slowly disappeared from their view. Meanwhile with Teia and Ino. Teia and Ino was taking a break from their search of Naruto, something Teia suggested. They are sitting on a bench in Kanoha's biggest park. Teia had asked Ino to let her take a break to catch her breath, which was a lie. Teia had started thinking while they were looking for Naruto about why they did it in the first place. Teia's exact thoughts were it's not like I like him or anything. There was something about Naruto that made Teia want to get to know him, not just because they share their last name. Teia grew up in a small village close to Wave Country. She lived in an orphanage until she was six years old. She left the orphanage on her own because she hated it there due to the way she and the others were treated. She lived on her own on the streets for another year until Arachimaru found her. Teia was wearing dirty clothes, she could not remember the last time she bathed or showered with anything resembling soap, and she was starved when Arachimaru found her. Or Kohimaru offered food, a place to live and a chance to become strong under his care. There was no way Teia could decline such an offer, so she followed the man not knowing anything about him. The next four and a half years she worked for Arachimaru and his underlings. Teia was stationed at one of the hideouts where Arachimaru held prisoners. Teia's job was to help the warden who was the one in charge of that hideout by serving food to the prisoners and cleaning the building. Teia did not complain because at least Arachimaru held two of his promises, her getting fed and having a place to live. That was until one day when she was woken up by a lot of commotion. All she could hear was people screaming and cheering. One soul man had on his own managed to capture or kill everyone loyal to Arachimaru and freed the prisoners. That same man was standing in the doorway to Teia's small room she slept in. The man's eyes widened as he saw her, before he spoke, come with me, if you want to be free. Teia decided to go with the man who she had first seen as an enemy. It was not like she had much choice in the matter anyhow. The man made similar promises as Orkohimaru had given her, promises of training to get stronger. Half a year passed. During that half a year Teia spent traveling with the old man who she now called Iro Sen in a nickname he rightfully deserved. Teia did not know much about Jiraiya other than him being a powerful perverted hermit who used toad summons, but she did not complain. This past half a year has been the happiest of Teia's young life, Jiraiya held his promise to train her as Teia was on her way to catch up with other kids receiving training in the academy of the ninja villages. Teia and Jureya got close as well as they gained something of a father-daughter-like bond. But their training stopped suddenly one day, when Jureya had received a message from a woman who Teia now knew to be Kiba's mother, in Izuka Tsum. Hirzen had sent Tsum to find Jureya to deliver an urgent message. That message was that Naruto was missing from the village and Jureya was to drop everything he was doing to help in the search of Naruto. Teia did not understand what was going on or why they had to stop traveling together. All she was told was that she was going to stay in Kanoha for a while under the Hokage since Jiraiya had to leave for something very important. Teia knew Jiraiya well enough by now to realize that there was no point in arguing about it. Tsum along with Teia then headed towards Kanoha together, while Jiraiya summoned as many small toads as he could. Find my godson was the last thing Teia heard Jiraiya say before he disappeared and the last time she saw him for a whole year. In Kanoha Teia had been given an apartment which happened to be next door to Naruto's old apartment. On Teia's second day in Kanoha she was all ready to start at the ninja academy entering into a kulpichas of her own age group. This was before she had been made into a jinchuriki. With Teia and Ino. As Teia thought back on what happened, before she arrived at Kanoha she had started shedding tears unknowingly. Ino who had just been enjoying the quiet evening in Kanoha's park sitting next to her friend saw Teia's tear and asked in a concerned tone Teia? What's wrong? How what? Teia responded quickly then widening her eyes as she realized she had been crying. It's nothing she wiped her tears away and forced herself to smile don't worry about it, cunt. Ino frowned as she stared at Teia for a while, she knew there was something bothering Teia, but she also knew there was no point in asking her about it. Instead Ino smiled and asked ready to find Naruto-kun? 
Just as Taiya was about to answer no I don't want to anymore Naruto and Kurenai entered the same row the bench that they currently sat on was placed at. Kurenai as in usual order was being carried by Naruto who seemed to have sobered up a little judging by the terrified expression on his face. Taiya forgot everything she thought about earlier as she rushed over towards the two with impressive speed. She jumped high in the air and kicked Naruto in his face with both of her feet, an impressive move to say the least fucking shithead. Taiya yelled. Naruto had dropped Kurenai as he landed on his bum on the ground. Naruto scratched the back of his head as the thought out loud where is that drink I ordered. He was still waiting for the bartender to bring his order. Taiya's kick seemed to have got Naruto thinking of other things than completing the mission. Unknown to them all while they were here Naruto's clone was being treated to a very nice show given by Naruto's Jounin sensei, Midarashi Anko. Anko had found Naruto before Naruto and Shikaku had reached the Hokage Tower and asked him to make a clone and have it follow her. Anko had then stripped out of her dress and her bra only leaving her panties on. Now Naruto got what he always asked for, to see her panties. The real Naruto has just received those memories after the clone popping, and now he was contemplating what to do. Everything was starting to get troublesome. While Naruto had always had plans of having multiple girlfriends, he was not sure he was ready for that right now, especially after what Shigure had offered him after the final fight of the exam. Naruto was a resourceful man, however and always had a plan. Naruto quickly created two clones and had them throw both Taiya and Ino over their shoulders, while the real Naruto carried Kurenai bridal style like earlier. Ino yelled at Naruto to throw away the others, while Taiya hit him on his back, let me go shithead. What is the meaning of this, Koi? Kurenai asked in a very irritated tone. Naruto's eyebrow twitched as he answered quiet Ana. Naruto planned on bringing them all back to his apartment so they could all spend the night in his bed like Taiya normally did. On the way back to his apartment he ran into Anko and decided to bring her as well, creating another clone then threw her up on his shoulder. A minor miscalculation in Naruto's plan is that he forgot about Kashina living in his apartment and she as his mother would probably have thing to say about all of this. Fortunately for Naruto Kashina had already fell asleep on his couch after a long masturbation session fantasizing about Naruto fucking her. What Naruto did not expect to happen when he let go of the girls after reaching his room was that the fourth shinobi world war broke out. Naruto would not get a single moment of rest this night. Naruto did not know how or when it happened, but sometime during the first hour of the girls wrestling as he called it another girl had entered the battle. Yugao had been bored with watching and decided she had to show who was most suited to date a captain. Six hours later. It was five in the morning when the girls had finally fallen asleep, all of them shared the small space next to him in his bed. Kurenai hugging Naruto to herself while Taiya spooned Naruto as she usually did on Naruto's other side, while the others lay next to them. I'll have to get a bigger bed Naruto noted. He had started to sober up a bit and was wondering what all of them were doing in his bed. The last thing he remembered from last night was going into a bar with that shika guy. The sound of someone knocking on his bedroom window broke him out of his thoughts. Outside stood Hirzen staring into his room with disbelief written all over his face. Naruto opened the window and asked what do you want, monkey? Hirazan's eyebrows twitched I want you to be in my office in an hour. You me and some other important people have much to discuss. Naruto frowned does this have anything to do with white panty on his offer? I beg your pardon? The female Kanjutsu user from the mist village wearing white panties Naruto said with a sigh. White panties? Hirazan shook his head idiot he scolded as he slapped Naruto on top off his head also, what am I to take of this situation? He pointed at the girl sleeping Naruto's bed. Naruto closed his eyes and chuckled lightly you tell me then jumped out the window deciding that he did not have any reason to stay there any longer. He would not get any sleep with them there anyhow. He was more interested in finding out what the old man wanted from him. Hirazan were happy that he had a chance to speak with Naruto for an extra hour. He had some ideas he would like to share with him. One hour later Hokage office. Naruto had a lot to think about after talking with Hirazan earlier, some of his suggestions were interesting to say the least. Just a few minutes ago they were joined by the rest of the people that would participate in this little meeting. Hirazan's two advisors, Hamura and Kaharu. The Raikage and his brother Keller B. The Mizukage and her advisor Ao, and the last person was Shigure. Hirazan opened up the meeting by throwing Naruto a green vest made for Kanoha Chunin's your promoted Kaharu and Himura just nodded at Naruto who shrugged in response before putting his new vest on. 
Here is in turn towards Mei you have the word, Mizuka Gay. Mei nodded, then turned towards Naruto and Shizun standing in front of the village leaders, I believe Shigure has already told you what this is about. She requested help with a mission, yes Naruto confirmed. Naruto was very interested in this mission since it involved Fuuka and the one she's been working with in secret. What Fuuka has been doing is unacceptable and she will deal with the consequences. More importantly we need to deal with the people handling the whole slavery business may continued as Naruto nodded in response, even before seeing your skills in the exams you were known as the bounty hunter Senju, a dangerous assassin. Naruto grinned widely I had to make money somehow, Dadabeo. The Raikage snorted out a laugh after hearing Naruto's verbal tick, while May repeated it Dadabeo? Squinting her eyes sat Naruto in confusion. Hiruzen sighed get on with it Mizuka Gay. May frowned at Hiruzen, she was sure he meant that she should go on and get married already marriage, she asked with closed eyes. No May sama, tell the mission details Ao said not wanting his leader's antics to hurt this new alliance between the four major villages. May wore an evil smile directed at Ao shut up Ao or I'll kill you. Why yes ma'am. Listen Anna, old people and the dumb Raikage Naruto said with a frown, is there anything you can tell me about the mission that Shigure doesn't already know? Did he call me my Anna? May thought with a wide smile, before answering no she's the one that has gathered most of the information. Naruto turned towards Shigure and spoke loudly then let's get going, before turning and walking towards the door. So you accept the mission, then? May asked. The only response she got from Naruto was a quiet whisper Senju. Shigure had followed after him, and moments later they were gone from their view. A stunned May stared at the door in confusion, when Hiruzen spoke I already told him about the mission, and yes he accepted it Naruto and Shigure was going to travel to a land far away from elemental nations to a country ruled by a corrupt kingdom. The very same kingdom Fuuka had brought slaves to from the elemental nations. The meeting did not end there. The Kages discussed on who they would promote from the participants in the Chunin exams. They also had various suggestions on how to strengthen the new alliance. One very interesting suggestion by the Raikage who had offered to let one of his teams work for him in Kanoha for three years. May had suggested a marriage between her village and her own, but that was declined after she requested to have Naruto marry her which would have him move to the Mist Village with her. Before leaving Kanoha Naruto only spoke with one person. At Naruto's apartments. Hey wake up Naruto said staring down at his mother sleeping on the couch. Naruto? Kashina said in a tired voice what is it? I'm leaving on a mission Naruto said which had Kashina's eyes wide in what mission? Can't say Naruto was not allowed to discuss the details of the mission with anyone mother. I have a request to make. Kashina smiled happy to be called mother again instead of ghost sure, Naruto. I want you to keep my friends, the friends that are currently in my room, safe while I'm gone. Your room? Kashina asked in confusion, did he have a sleepover? Yes mother Naruto said simply, before walking away take care, mother. You too, Naruto Kashina smiled at her son as he left the apartment. She was curious to find out who his friends were so she slowly walked towards Naruto's room. Moments later she was yelling her lungs out I will kill you Naruto. Tebane. As she saw Kurinai, Ino, Teaya, Anko, and Yugao sleeping in Naruto's bed with messy hair wearing nothing but a bra and panties. The rest of their clothing had been destroyed during their catfight anyhow. Outside Kanoha's southern gate. Naruto whose face was now covered by a white anvil mask that resembled a toad walked next to Shigure who wore a Kiri Hunter Nin mask. Don't slow me down, white panty on and Naruto then speed up as he jumped up towards the treetops. That's. My. Line Shigure responded slowly as she appeared in front of Naruto who grinned and sped up even more. When it was time for promotions no one was surprised to find out that Naruto was the only one that got promoted of the Kanoha ninjas. All three sand ninjas were promoted, while Yujido was the lone Kumo ninja to get promoted. From Kiri once again all three were promoted, even Vyuka who for some reason had disappeared during the day. Anko had asked on where Naruto was, and only received the same information as Kashina had given her earlier in the morning he's on a mission, when Kurinai had found out that he had left without even a goodbye, she was furious and made note to force Naruto to take her out on a date when he got back home. One week later. After a week there was still no word for Naruto, which meant that the mission he was on would take a long time. Today Teaya and Kashina had been working all morning as they had moved their belongings from Teaya's in Naruto's apartment into Kashina's new house. The house had been given to her by Tsunade Senju who owned several large houses within the Senju clan compound. 
The house was rather big, a lot bigger than their old apartments. The house had five bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen and a large living room. When Kashina and Taya were done with the moving they decided to head over to a bathhouse to get cleaned up and enjoy a nice warm bath. When they got there they were not surprised to find Jureya outside the bathhouse with a perverted grin planning on peeking on the women's side no doubt. Iro Senin? Taya asked surprised seeing her old father figure. Jureya face faulted at the nickname, while Kashina giggled that suits you, you old pervert. HMPF Jureya snorted you still don't edit do you, Kashina Chen? A. Taya responded while Kashina got a tick mark on her forehead as she waited Jureya's yell of I'm not just a regular pervert. I'm a super pervert, holding both thumbs up in front of him with a dumb grin stuck on his face. Pervert or not? Kashina spoke as she gritted her teeth you do remember what happened last time I caught you peeking, she asked with a sickening smile. Jeez Kashina Chan, why do you always have to think the worse of me? Jureya asked with fake tears I'm only here for research Jureya did remember what happened last time. It was over 15 years ago. Kashina and Makoto had caught him peeking on them and then beat him up so bad he had to spend two days in the hospital. Enough. Taya yelled get the fuck out of here, Iro Senin. If I find out you fucking peeked on me, I'll cut off your balls. Jureya snorted once again HMPF, before walking off with his head down who would want to peek on you anyway, snotty brat. What did you say, fucker? Taya yelled as she ran after Jureya who sped up after being chazzed by the fiery redhead. Ahoho. I'm only interested in women with a nice figure. Jureya laughed away with Taya's anger only growing. Kashina shook her head at the antics of her late husband's teacher's antics. Jureya would never change, and that may be for the best. Now she could enjoy a bath alone and let Taya spend some time with the one that saved her from Rachimaru. She had talked with Taya about her past and knew what Jureya was to her. Ten minutes later. Taya had finally been able to catch the pervert I got you now, Iro Senin. Or so she thought as the Jureya she held down poofed into smoke as another Jureya appeared next to her. Jureya snorted out a laugh, it will take a hundred more years of training before you can catch me, brat. Taya had moved behind Jureya as he spoke and now pointed a kunai to his throat, could you repeat that? Jureya sweat dropped which had Taya laughing at this expense. Jureya chose to sit down next to a tree in the training grounds they had been running off to. Taya sat down next to him as he asked so. How have you been since Wave? Taya and her team's mission in Wave Country was the last time she had a chance to talk with Jureya due to Naruto's unexpected appearance. Thinking back on that night made Taya annoyed. Flashback, the night Jureya appeared in Wave. Taya was surprised to see Iro Senin of all people show up in Wave. This was the first time she saw him since he had to leave her three years ago to go find someone that had disappeared. It was obvious to her now that the one he was looking for was Yuzumaki Naruto, the very same person Taya wanted answers from on who he was and why they shared their last name. Taya also did not like that Naruto seemed to be a lot stronger than herself and her teammates, even though he's the same age as them. When Tazuna opened the door to his home they were immediately greeted by Tsunami, who had a worried look on her face before she saw them all coming back. Tsunami expression changed into a kind smile father what happened? Did it go well? Tazuna nodded thanks to all of these guys we have defeated Gato once and for all. Thank you so much Tsunami spoke slowly addressing the Kanoha ninjas looking over all of them. Once her eyes rested upon Jureya who leered at her with Naruto's thrown over his shoulder, she frowned and asked who are you? Jureya shined up as he threw Naruto up the air along with a small smoke bomb. The action caused Taya snort out a laughter, do you know what an amazing person I am? Jureya spun his head around cracking his neck and started moving his beat as he danced, it's been said that I'm the Toad Senin. And that's not all. In the north and the south, east and west. The legendary Senin's own white-haired Toad Summoner Wonder Child. The handsome man, that can silence a crying child. It's Jureya Sama. That's me. As the smoke cleared Jureya stood posing in front of Naruto who now laid on the floor mumbling in his sleep, while the rest of the people stared at him in disbelief. Taya however enjoyed Iro Senin's silliness, while Kakashi was used to it. Tsunami was about to chase the freak out of her home, when Naruto who was still sleeping started talking in his sleep. He emitted a perverted giggle, before saying Tsu hi my would like to wake up with my head in between your testicles. Ha ha ha. Sasuke laughed loudly I knew he was a faggot. Kakashi had a stern look on his face as he stared down Sasuke language, he reprimanded him, while Sasuke pointed at Taya with his thumb but but she. Enough. 
Kakashi yelled do not use such vulgar language in front of the clients again, hear me? Sasuke nodded with a grim look on his face yes, Kakashi-sensei. Tsunami blushed at the Tsuheim comment which she thought was his nickname for her, not knowing about his obsession of Tsunade. The testicle comment irked her, however Naruto must be feeling ill I'll have to nurse him back to health Tsunami offered as she tried to carry Naruto to her bedroom to let him rest, she quickly found out that Naruto was a lot heavier than she expected. You, she yelled pointing at Sasuke help me carry him to my bed. Sasuke scowled, but did as he was told pick your battles wisely, Sasuke he repeated in his head as he carried Naruto to Tsunami's bedroom. Meanwhile Jiraiya had motioned for Teaya to follow him outside, so they could talk for a while in private. Sakura had been questioning Kakashi if it was okay for Naruto to spend the night in a bed with a woman who had to be close to twice his age. Kakashi answered with a nod and that he would make sure to retell the story to all the guys back home. Sakura sweat dropped as Kakashi began giggling perversely and decided to call it a night as she headed to bed. Sitting on top of the roof of the house Jiraiya began telling Teaya of his recent travels and why he had to leave three years ago. He told her that he was a close friend of Naruto's parents and had to find him after he disappeared from Konoha, leaving out the fact that he was kidnapped. Teaya received a lot of answers that night and was no longer as angry at the pervert who had left her in Konoha without any explanations three years ago. Whenever the topic of Teaya becoming a Jinchuriki came up Jiraiya would frown and change the subject making Teaya believe that he was against the decision. Something she would find out was true very soon. End flashback. I have been doing well and I think I've improved a lot. I'm pissed at Naruto-kun for ruining any chances I had in becoming a Chunin. However Teaya answered Jiraiya's earlier question on how she has been since they last met. Oh ho ho Jiraiya laughed Naruto-kun. I thought he went by shithead nowadays. Teaya blushed and glared at him shut up Iro Senen, she yelled as Jiraiya kept laughing. Mama. Teaya-chan. Jiraiya was probably the only one that could get away with calling her that, other than Kashina and the Hokage I'm glad I ran into you because I was planning on talking with you about a little training trip. Training trip? Teaya asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes but it's also a mission. We're going to find my old teammate, it shouldn't take longer than a few weeks Jiraiya explained. Your teammate? Teaya yelled with a shocked expression, why the fuck are we going after that snake bastard? Not him, my other teammate. She's a pretty woman and she's really interested in meeting you, I promise. Jiraiya pleaded. Why would I care about an old hag? Teaya spat back at him. Jiraiya chuckled make sure to never call her that when she's around for your own safety. Teaya snorted in response HMPF. Whatever you say Iro Senen. Okay if that's all then I want you meet me at Ichiraku's in two hours Jiraiya told her as he stood up and walked away while Teaya did the same heading back to the bathhouse. Three hours later. Jiraiya and Teaya were now walking on a road in the forest a few miles outside of Kanoha. So where are we heading? Teaya asked sounding a bit excited. Tenzaki Gai. A village where people from all over the elemental nations go to gamble and drink at any of the many bars in the village Jiraiya explained. And there's a lot of fucking brothels, right, Iro Senen she yelled the last part comically. Jiraiya held up both hands in defense I wouldn't know. Honest then he sighed I told you already we are going there to find my old teammate, Princess Tsunade. HMPF Teaya pouted and looked to her left away from Jiraiya, an old hag of a princess, her expression changed into a smile as she asked anyway, what kind of training are we doing? Jiraiya had a thoughtful look on his face as he placed his hand under his chin, what are you thinking about, Irosenin? HM. I think considering what I've seen from you so far, I will have to train you in all areas Jiraiya said seriously causing Teaya to scowl are you saying I'm bad at everything? Jiraiya nodded sagely yes I did. Fuck you Iro Senen. Now it was Jiraiya's turn to be on receiving end of one Teaya's kicks to the groin. Nothing he had not experienced before. Guys, I will stop here, I hope did you enjoyed. This video. If you do please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing content and. If you are still watching this video then, please leave a like and complete our like goal. Thanks you guys for watching this video, sayonara.